Now, we couldn't come to Fermanagh and not look at the controversy surrounding fracking. It's one of the biggest issues right across the county and the topic of much debate. The gas exploration company Tamboran wants to extract shale gas, which is buried here in Fermanagh. Fracking involves drilling down into the earth, then using huge volumes of water to fracture the rock and access the gas. People in Fermanagh are concerned as this process has been linked to water contamination and to minor earthquakes. Tamboran currently hold a license to explore a vast area of Fermanagh for shale gas and locals are worried that their land may be affected. So it's a big issue and earlier on I heard from both sides of the debate. Well, Richard Merman is CEO of Tamboran Resources and Dr Aidan McLaughlin is a scientist and campaigner. Um, Richard, uh, In Your Corner understands that 20% of uh, the license area that you're looking at is forest service land and that you've met them as well. Is it your intention to use forest service land for your original exploration? Well, Wendy, as part of all the work out there, the pads have a lot of flexibility as to where they're put. We would like to locate several of them inside forested areas because it gives us the chance to keep them out of everybody's way. Forestry will help in many ways to reduce the visual impacts for the project. But really, we'll put them wherever they make the best sense for everybody around the area. If that were to be the case, Aideen, there are a lot of people here who are against this whole procedure. How would they feel about Forest Service land being used? Well, I have a basic problem with that, really, because they are, after all, they're state forests. And really, they should belong to the people of Fermanagh, the forests that are in Fermanagh, that the people should have a, have a say in what happens to them. And we're not just talking about one well in the exploratory stage. I mean, if you're talking about 40% um, of the wells being put into forested areas, which is what Tamborn did say at the very beginning. Now, we don't know how many, but maybe we're talking about up to 25 paths being put into forests and with huge amounts of, with huge acreage being involved, access roads, compressors, big machinery, and really basically you're talking about a lot of Fermanagh's forests actually being rendered unusable now for the people. You've been to talk to the Forest Service, uh, the Minister's been talking about this as well. well. What sort of reaction have you had? Are they ready, willing and able for you to use the land? Well, I think we should be clear, uh, some of our people have had an introductory meeting with the Forest Service, and the whole idea was simply to understand the procedures, the rules. The Forest Service does many of these kinds of projects for wind farms and other developments, so they have They're a standard set of rules. somewhat less controversial, though, aren't they? Well, depending on who you talk to, of course. But from that point of view, of course, to Aideen's very point, we've already considered the issues with this. And one of the things we've already proposed internally is mitigation efforts, so that for every acre we put to use somewhere, we'll look to use two or more acres and develop those separately, either as forestry or tourism areas. Although you could see that people would see that as a way of getting around landowners' objections. Well, I think it's a responsible thing to do, first of all. As Aideen points out, if you're going to take forestry out of the equation, how do you put it back into the equation somewhere else and where people might want it, where people might use it? What about other aspects that, to which people have objections? Water contamination, for instance. Now, I know that you say that you're not going to use chemicals, but that hasn't been done before. And even if the liquid is clean going in, the stuff that comes back out is contaminated, isn't it? And in cases, radioactive. There's lots of radon around here. Well, to be very clear, you've asked a lot of things in that sentence. First of all, the issue with water contamination comes down, if ever, to an issue of poor practice in installing the well in the first place. That Not with the stuff that comes back up uh, out of the ground. No, fair enough. In the issue of, first of all, though, if a well is built properly, you cannot contaminate the water. The incidence rate of this in the United States is less than one in a thousand wells. Secondly, the water coming back up, radioactivity is extraordinarily rare in shale. It's actually only happened once in the Marcellus shale. It hasn't happened in other shales. Radon is a granite-based uh, component. It's, it's a gas that floats through the whole system. It's not going to come back at any greater than background levels. But the issue is what's in the shale. The composition of the shale determines what comes back with the water. Well, the Bundoran Shale takes its name from the Bundoran Rocks right around the town of Bundoran. Everybody living in the area of the Bundoran outcrops on the beach knows exactly what's in those rocks if they wish to. That's what's coming back. 
that's a perfectly acceptable kind of rock to have in your neighborhood. So we're not going to bring anything back that's harmful. Uh, Aideen Richard says that they're not going to do anything that's harmful. And at the moment, we import virtually all of our energy here. Yes. There are companies that are really struggling to pay their bills. Is it not fair enough to try a new, a new source of energy? You see, the problem is that um, whereas Richard says if you construct the well properly, there won't be any problems, that actually is not the situation that it's not just the structure of the wells, it's the actual contamination that takes place whenever there is human failure, and there so often is. There are accidents, there are spillages, there are leaks. Here we have a lot of rain. If the wastewater is put into containment pits, there's dangers of flooding, and of course all of those, with the number of lakes and streams we have locally, there obviously is a danger of contaminating okay. surface water, uh, without Richard, any doubt. Just a, just a final point. Um, you're, you've put in, you have to put in for planning by the end of the year. You only need landowner consent for that, uh, for sample drilling. When and where will you be doing that? Will those first uh, explorations be done on publicly owned land? Uh, there's a very good chance that the land purchases will be identified in the next month, roughly. They'll be purchased from whoever we can deal with. There are private landowners, there are forestry services, all of that's underway right now. But once those are in place, we actually have to go through an over one year environmental impact assessment. So planning permission, for example, in the western Fermanagh area can't even begin to be sought until roughly mid-2013. Okay. So it, we've got a long ways to go. And if I may add the point on water contamination, Again, it's all down to your environmental impact assessment, showing people that you have containment. Okay, well, you made that point, and thanks very much indeed. Uh, long way to go on this, I think, but thanks both of yes. you very much indeed for coming along today. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Wendy. Now, each week you've been telling us your views on the stories we've been covering. You've already been getting in touch with us this evening. Sharon has tweeted to say that she's opposed to fracking before a thorough investigation of the pollution risks and a comparison with the energy potential of renewables. Thank you for that, Sharon.